Welcome to the Vancouver Market Reports. This is the first week of November and we're going to review the market changes throughout the Lower Mainland and we'll have a guest speaker Moss Maloney from uh, Remax Performance as he tells us about the effects of the uh, C-SPAN and how that could actually affect as far out as Surrey. Let's look forward to that. Okay, we've seen both Vancouver and Richmond uh, pick up quite a bit from their 11 and 10 percent last month. North Vancouver has dropped from its 28 percent sell through for the month right down to 22 but still nice and healthy. And overall the entire uh, Vancouver marketplace here is at 16% sell through. White Rock went really really quiet on us. Lack of sales. Out in the valley uh, it's picked up 1%. Uh, we've seen a few changes there but basically very very steady and fairly flat. Let's have a look how that compares to two weeks ago. Once again showing Richmond or North Vancouver much stronger and here's Richmond at 10% and White Rock once again was still at its 7% but here we are with uh, Maple Ridge was at 10% a couple of weeks ago it's picked up a little bit Abbotsford uh, at 9% has not changed but Mission had some extra sales here uh, from their 18 they went up to 34 so a real nice bump for for Mission to get back into the game here let's compare this to last year here we are with um, 3,000 uh, 300 and 32 sales in the Vancouver area and 310 in the Fraser Valley. This time last year we were 387 sales in the Vancouver area, so higher at a 19% sell through, quite a difference, a much stronger market last November. And out in the valley, exactly the same numbers here almost, we're at 10%. So that's 281 versus 310. Very, very similar for both inventory and sell through rates. Okay, here we are on the, the market trend indicator and the STR graph put together. Uh, once again, your percentage sold rates are right here, the STR. And you can see North Vancouver still in an up market with 22%. Virtually all the other markets are either stable or pressure downward. The green arrow here, the market trend indicator, is showing that North Vancouver is selling the majority of their new listings right now so next month they're going to be starting seeing a decrease in inventory. Uh, we have that for all five cities here. This can be a fairly traditional thing as, as we move towards Christmas but it does show that uh, there are less listings now coming in. We can just have a real quick comparison for the last few weeks back to see how they do compare. So the previous week was very very similar previous two weeks and back in October we saw a lot of extra listings coming here in Vancouver and Richmond showing a, a big increase. Now let's go interview Moss Maloney from Remax Performance and see what his take is on how the C-SPAN project is going to influence the valley right out to Surrey. Hello, it's Moss. How you doing today? Oh, hi. Good. Moss, I'm glad to have you join us here. Now, listen, Moss, you've been in the business for 30-some years in the Surrey area, right? That's correct, Bill. 33 years. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, Moss, we're here to go over the marketplace a little bit with you, and I appreciate you taking the time. Moss, you've been, I think, on every board in the country here. You are one of the people that follows the changes a lot, and I know you're sort of a supply and demand type of guy yourself. So, listen, let's just have a real quick review on what the market's done here recently. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, um, the market's uh, holding pretty steady. We got a 16% sell through in the in the Vancouver Chinese corridor and out in the valley we we're at 11%. That's actually uh, almost identical to last week, uh, the last couple of weeks, so we've actually gained just a little bit. I think we've seen a difference in the uh, in the consumer out there, a little bit more confidence that Europe was finally getting their banking system together, and it kind of looked like Greece was going to be uh, out of their um, default position. And uh, let's just call it fairly stable right now. I mean, what do you, what's your take on, for example, the Surrey area? You're 13, 14 percent sell through right now. That's not too bad, right? No, I think that uh, we've trended into a more stable market. Um, the listing inventory has uh, shrunk from 
um, November start to from the October start, and it shrunk by about 3.9 to about 4%. Um, the interesting thing about uh, the market, I believe, is we, and people don't like to talk about it, but obviously we've gone through a tremendous amount of buyers who have purchased real estate in the last year or even two, and it's a bit of a shrug going on, sort of a time to take your breath. Right. So, Moss, probably the biggest news we've had in the last few weeks is C-SPAN. Now, in, I actually don't know if BC's ever even had more than a, like a billion, two billion dollar uh, piece of the federal pie in our lives, and this is huge. Like, uh, if there's eight billion dollars spread out over the next ten or fifteen years, and I'm reading some numbers that say that's fifteen hundred jobs, and let's just say there's as many as maybe twelve spin-off support people you know from the grocery store to the gas station guy that that are being supported with those 1500 jobs that's a pretty incredible uh, bill uh, the, the important thing to remember is and um, when I was watching it's the economic spin-off so even though uh, an eight billion dollars is a monstrous amount of money and you know c-span will benefit from it uh, citizens of British Columbia will benefit from it but the economic spin-off, even before the ships are built, there has to be this infrastructure upgrade. So there's an economic spin-off. And then all of the support folks around C-SPAN in North Vancouver and the C-SPAN operations over on Vancouver Island will be even more spin-off. But even better than that are the jobs for those young people graduating from BCIT and the other technical schools that have the skills that are being sought after. I think that is the real benefit of the $8 billion dollars that British Columbia will see over the next 10 to 15 years. And so right. this does mean that some of those folks will actually now be able to go out and buy houses in those affordable communities, like the island, where they know they're going to be working on ships for the next 15 years. Now, I see that um, the spin-off, direct spin-off, uh, there will probably be guys from Surrey that are going to drive. What uh, Would you call it an, an hour and a half to get to the North Van shipyard? How far a drive is that from you? Know, uh, from downtown Surrey or South Surrey, you're an hour and a half, in it, and that's dependent solely on whether it's a good day for traffic or a bad day. Well, listen, we do have the, what is it, eight lanes on the Port Man, so that's going to make things go a lot smoother. So I think in general, like, I don't think we're going to get guys from Abbotsford that are going to actually work for years out in North Vancouver. I think that's a bit of a stretch. But for Surrey, it, the the economic benefit directly could penetrate right into Surrey. Now, I mean... Guys will probably consider moving in, into North Burnaby or even to North Vancouver, right? So. Oh, yeah. I'd say there are people who do that. Of course there will be because um, a long-term job is, uh, is is a real economic booster in terms of, you know, I'll move there because I know I'm going to be working for the next X amount of years in this particular spot. Right. So people do move for jobs. There's no question about that. I counter that from the the monies that have come in from the the Chinese investor over the years here. I don't really see a huge uh, benefit for. Yes, there's been a lot of condos sold to you know like something like the uh, Coal Harbor area, the Li Kai Shing um, development there. A lot of in that case it was more Hong Kong money came in. But the real economic benefits haven't been there. Yes, people built places and there was a short term for construction, but it wasn't long term jobs. C SPAN is the first huge economic boost to our economy in I think almost my lifetime. I mean I think this is absolutely phenomenal. I, I think that the C SPAN eight billion dollar um, investment in British Columbia shipbuilding is monstrous as well. I also believe that, and we know this to be true, that when, when someone buys a house, whether it's a condo or a home or whatever it is, there's generally an economic spin-off from the purchase, anywhere between ten and $20,000, depending on what that consumer buys as a new product for their new home, whether they're doing improvements or furniture or appliances. So there is, even with the offshore buyers buying some of these um, condos and investing in houses, there's generally speaking some 
economic spin that goes past that, and we know this statistically for the British Columbia Real Estate Association, where we've done study after study with respect to how much economic impact does a purchase of a condo or a house bring into the community. Right. So, although it's a small economic benefit, it's still an economic benefit, but it does pale compared to an $8 billion investment in shipbuilding industry in British Columbia. Right. And what... Or, and, and listen, one can only hope that when this shipyard is retooled to handle these, I'm assuming, much bigger ships, uh, that well, let's just hope that we're competitive on the world market and we actually garner even more business down the road, right? So I'm sure C-SPAN is, you know, uh, hoping to be an international supplier of, of ships, uh, but let's see if that actually materializes, right? Well, the, the biggest benefit in ramping up the shipbuilding industry is, you know, uh, we no longer have to go to Germany to build our ferries, which has always irked most British Columbians, um, considering that if we have a viable shipbuilding industry here, then there's no reason for us to have our ferries built offshore uh, out of aluminum or other things that make no sense. So I think that there's an even bigger, longer-term spinoff for uh, British Columbians and young British Columbians. Let's hope. I mean, the fast ferry fiasco was bad. I mean, the design never worked for our waters. But in general, it is a good concept that for our own ships, if we're going to get them built in Germany or Norway or something, are we kidding? Even though it might be cheaper there, there are no economic spin-offs. None of our people got any jobs, and now they will. So let's hope in the future, all future ferries for our ferry system could even be crafted right in our own province, right? Well, th- th- that's, I guess, where you have to give... Uh, the conservative government a pat on the back for A, the process they went through uh, to get to this point and B, what the long term implications are and the long term implications are of course that we create from uh, the east coast and the west coast a viable shipbuilding industry that can service the needs of uh, ship industry in uh, British Columbia and uh, over on uh, in Halifax where they also have ferries as well to continue the Trans-Canada Highway so yeah, lots of economic spin-offs and benefits to the $32 billion invested by the government. Well, Moss, you get to be one of the lucky interviewees this year where, you know, we're we're talking probably the most positive in the industry this particular month, and I, I am happy to see that. Uh, we've certainly seen our Chinese money come in this year. Uh, we've certainly seen that the federal government is making some changes on this 3,200 quick business investor program, dropping that down to 700. How that will affect us in the long term, it, you know, it feels like a $4 billion out of it. And then on top of that, uh, FinTrack uh, coming more into play with uh, with some of these monies coming into the country, like from China, um, we might see a bit of curtailing of that money coming in. But here we got True Blue Investment and our exports for the province you know, like things like lumber and uh, coal and all our, our minerals are really, really strong right now. And China has just surpassed the consumption of lumber uh, over the USA. So we, Moss, you and I both know the, the California market is as quiet as it can possibly get. They're not building a whole bunch of, they don't need our cabinets, they don't need our windows, they don't need our doors, they don't need our lumber. They are virtually shut down. And China is coming on right now. It's mostly lumber, but uh, that has become is going to become one of our strongest trading partners. So BC is actually sitting in a pretty strong position as far as resource base, which is good for government coffers. Where we're still going to have a little trouble in the interior, or where are the actual jobs? So 10,000 jobs through the lumber industry for China, that's good, but still, you, you know, a lot of this mining and that, um, you know, they don't need a lot of staff to to run a coal mine, right? Not not like uh, manufacturing industry or something to that effect. So interesting to see the future here, but I think. In general, Moss, I don't know if you agree with me totally, but I think the overall export industry for the province here is looking good, and we will have uh, we could have a a pretty solid uh, future here. Uh, the manufacturing sector of the Fraser Valley, I think, uh, still needs to get 
uh, diversified from the American market into other uh, global markets to get some recovery here. Well, there's a lot of things to say there, Bill, but the, I think the, what we have to look at is Canada is in a great spot. They've, uh, we've done the right things. The banking system is strong, and uh, the rest of the world is coming to us for resources. And, uh, and when you look at um, the the meltdown in Europe, uh, Mark Carney is in charge of that process, and the world is looking to Canada as leaders. And frankly, I think they're doing a good job in it. And uh, it's a it's it's a bonus to live in beautiful British Columbia. What Listen, bottom line, let's summarize the fact that we are living in one of the most amazing countries in the world. Um, it's been time and time again we've said we've got one of the strongest banking systems in the world. We have basically have had no foreclosures in Canada forever. In, there sits the states with a 12% foreclosure rate in some areas. So... Uh, we're doing good. Uh, we got to keep our nose to the grindstone and, and be accountable. But I think uh, our current governments are actually doing a pretty good job, and I think we're getting guided in the right direction. I would agree with you in almost all those points. I think that this is uh, a great place to be right now. and uh, The future looks bright for us, but you know what? You can't take your eye off the ball. So listen, if you want to get a hold of Moss, he's in the in Surrey here. Moss, you want to give us a little contact information as I pull up your yep, website Yep, you can reach here? me at uh, Remax Performance Realty. You can call me on my cell number at 604-760-4888. I generally answer my calls immediately uh, or within an hour, and I'm always available to help you uh, with the selling strategy or to help you with uh, whatever your real estate needs are. So once again, Moss in the industry for a long time, you can, you can count on Moss for being very, very involved in the community. He has given a lot of his heart and his time to the industry, and he is extremely knowledgeable. Thank you very much, Moss. We look forward Thanks, to maybe Bill. an update in the next year, and thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye now. Thanks.